Movie Review by Rob. Hey guys, Rob here, and today we are going to review my Bloody Valentine 3D. That's right. This was the first 3D movie uh, for horror films that I've seen in theaters, and I've been eager to see it since, uh, you know, I kind of was born after the big hype of, uh, you know, Friday 13th 3D, Jaws 3 3D, and, um, and of course, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, 6, Freddy's Dead in 3D. So I was really looking forward to this, and let me tell you, uh, right from the bat, uh, this was not a bad horror film. Uh, granted, it had a lot of the errors that most horror films have, and I, like said in previous reviews, don't think there's going to be a lot of good horror films, per se, that are going to come around a lot. Now, this isn't an original film, to least, because it's it's actually a remake of a 1981, I believe, horror film called My Bloody Valentine. There are some differences between the two. Uh, I hadn't seen My Bloody Valentine, but I had read the uh, the the plot after I had seen the new one because I didn't want to be comparing the two at all. Um, a couple of really good parts. Let's first talk about what everybody wants to know. It's the 3D. Uh, if you see this in 2D, I can imagine being very disappointed because a lot of the shots, like if you ever watch the old um, Friday the 13th and 3D, Friday the 13th Part 3 and 3D, uh, you know, there's a lot of shots where people are putting things in front of the the camera very slowly and you're like why are they doing this this isn't any anything important but for the folks that actually do see it in 3d uh it's pretty amazing i mean not only does the 3d make things come out at you and i mean when it comes out at you it's not it's not as good as the universal studios terminator 3d um show they have down there if you guys have seen that or even the imax prehistoric uh 3d show where the actual things look like you could touch them but it definitely what it does is it creates a three-dimensional space it gives the the environments um and the characters they stand out so you can actually you know get some some depth between it and i think that just makes the movie better in general i think most films would probably benefit from this without the you know things coming at you aspect of it but just the actual you know the enrichment in the actual um the sets and stuff it would just be amazing uh but with that said a lot of the the death sequences because of course it's a horror film and there's going to be a lot of gore they involve that 3d um the story for those who do not know is about um a mine accident that has happened uh and what happens is a bunch of people are trapped down there and when they finally uh, get around to getting them out and rescuing them, only there there's only one survivor and he's in a coma. Um, upon investigation, the, survive, the, the people who died down in the mine actually were not killed by the, uh, the collapse of the mine, but in fact um, a pickaxe blow to their head, leaving the only survivor, uh, Harry Warden, I believe is his name, to be the, the killer. But of course he's in a coma. Uh, the movie starts off with Harry, of course, waking up from the coma and wreaking his revenge. I don't know if it's revenge, um, but havoc um, on on the citizens of Harmony. Uh, and this all takes place on Valentine's Day. And there's a Valentine's Day party going on at the old abandoned mine where, of course, he wreaks havoc. Um, then the film picks up ten years later where the deaths once again start to, to happen. Uh, and that's basically the plot of this movie. I don't want to give away a lot. Uh, I want to say that this this is kind of one of those Scooby-Doo horror movies, kind of like Scream was, where you're you're trying to guess through the whole thing of who the killer is. Unfortunately, from my perspective, I, I figured out who the killer was right away. I will give them props, though, that they did try to throw me off a couple of times. But, I mean, in the end, as far as the shock value of who the killer was, I was a little disappointed there. Gore-wise, it's very good. Death sequences are pretty good. The only uh, complaint I have about that is that the killer only uses the pickaxe. Um, from reading about the older one, uh, the killer involved other things as well, like a drill bit or something. And I'm, I'm, I was a little disappointed with that because you can only kill someone with a pickaxe so many different ways. Albeit they used all those different ways. But uh, yeah, I felt a little cheated there. Um, Reading the, the, the synopsis of the old story sounded a lot more developed compared to the new one. Uh, in the older one, from what I was told, um, 
the killer, it's not that people are trapped and he kills them to survive, because that I liked that about the new one, but then him waking up from the coma and just killing people didn't make sense to me. Apparently in the older one, um, people had left their posts to do a Valentine's Day party, and he killed them because of that, well, and, and it caused the accident, so he vowed, he said nobody should ever have a Valentine's Day party again in that town, and when they do that, then he starts killing people. So, as far as motivation in this, it, there wasn't as much for the for the, the beginning, you know. Um, Pacing-wise, I felt a couple of the parts dragged. The uh, There's not a lot of main actors in this other than um, Tom Atkins from Halloween 3 was in this, as well as, um, I, his name alludes me, oh, it's uh, Kevin Teague. He plays the uh, the father of um, John Locke on the Lost series, so it was very interesting seeing him in a film as well. The director Patrick Lucier uh, did mostly editing for horror movies. He did direct uh, Dracula 2000 as well as the Dracula Ascension and stuff like that. Um, but overall, I'm going to give this film um, I'm going to give it four burgles. Four burgles. One, two, four burgles. Uh, because. I was very entertained. The gore was very good. Um, story, of course, lacked. The jump scares, uh, unlike The Unborn, there was only maybe one, maybe two jump scares, and they weren't, like, dramatically placed. They were okay. They didn't get me, but at least they weren't, like, every other second. Um, and the killer was really well, like, costume-wise. I think he, he had a good aura about him. Um... Uh, and overall, I, I walked out of the theater, the 3D making it better. I don't know how 2D is going to go with the audiences. I mean, I still think the gore would be cool, but I think the 3D definitely helped it out. And I hope to see more films like this, because I know there's the Final Destination 4 film that's coming out in 3D uh, in the upcoming year. And there's Coraline, uh, directed by uh, Henry Selick, and is also coming out in 3D within this month, I believe. Uh, well, within February. So I'm very much looking forward to that as well. Um... So I hope they, they really take advantage of this technology. Uh, it adds to it. I mean, this movie probably would have been like three and a half, three, uh, if not for that 3D that pushed it over the top. But definitely check it out. I think seeing it in 3D, worth it. Definitely worth it. See it while you can because you don't want to be one of those horror fans down the road who is like, man, I wish I would have saw it. Because if they release this on DVD, your screen's just not going to do it justice. And I, if, if all you're getting is 2D around you, I'd say wait for a DVD unless you're a real horror fan and you want to see some good body count um, numbers. Other than that, just wait. But definitely 3D, check it out. And remember, next time, I'll be watching.